Hey there, this is Horner, and we're going to talk a little bit about electricity. So this packet is called What You Absolutely Need to Know to Pass the Electrical Circuits, part of the AP Physics 1 exam. And the first topic we'll talk about is electric current. And electric current is kind of like water that flows through uh, a pipe. So when you have water flowing through the pipe, the thing that uh, is the water is the water molecules. So in electric current, there's a flow of charge. And we've talked a little bit about negative and positive charges. And we know that water flows from a top of a hill all the way down to a bottom of a hill. So if we have a pipe, like this pipe, that we know that water always flows downhill. So there's our pipe. If we put some water in it, then that water will flow down. A battery and a wire do the same sort of thing. So if I have a battery, so let's just draw a really quick battery. Here's a battery. Uh, we're going to put this little end here. We're going to call this positive and this negative. And if I hook a wire up to it, then the same thing happens. We will have charge going from one end to the other. And so we see that this is kind of like the hill, the top of the hill. And this is like the bottom of the hill and charge will flow from one end to the next. Uh, so charge will go from the positive end to the negative end of the battery. And so that's kind of what it is. Uh, what's interesting about this is we have to be careful, and I'm going to show you something that will help you a little bit. The charges, the actual charges, okay, which are electrons, flow in the direct opposite direction of electric current. So in order to show you what that means, I'm going to show you a little Java applet here. This is a battery, and this battery has a positive and a negative side. So the positive side would be here, and the negative side would be here. And the little balls that you see here are electrons. These are electrons. This is not current. These are just electrons. And the electrons, if you remember, are negative. So if they're negative, they should flow in this direction, away from the negative, And then they will flow back into the battery on this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw the little switch down here. And we're going to watch the electrons move. And you'll notice that they do. They go from the negative end of the battery and they flow through the light bulb, lighting up the bulb through the switch, and then they make a complete path all the way back to the positive end of the battery. So this is like a pump, and it's like pumping water as it goes around, and that's what voltage does, is it pumps it. And then current is measuring what we call amps. The problem is, is the electrons flow in this direction. So we know that these are electrons, and they're flowing in this direction. The actual charge so the charge, we'll put this in red, charge, or the current, okay, so the charges, they flow in this direction. The current of electricity flows in the opposite direction. So whichever way the electrons are going, we're going to say that the current, okay, so that's the current, will actually flow in the opposite direction. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to explain it, and as we do some more electricity things, I think you'll see a little bit better what that means. So the actual moving charges, the electrons flow in a direction opposite that to electric current. Uh, you can now think about positive current. Positive current will flow from, so let's go back to our little demo here, positive current, so we're going to call this positive current, will flow in the opposite direction. So we know that positive current is going in this direction because it's going from the positive end of the battery to the negative. The electrons, though, they actually flow in the opposite direction, and those are the charges. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next part. Here it says electric current is measured. Now we get into the math part in amps. So I is electric current. It is measured in an amp or an ampere. And we can calculate that by finding the total amount of charge that passes during a particular time. So the very first question that we have says, I have a 30 Coulomb charge that passes through a resistor. So a resistor is something that slows down electricity, and it takes six seconds. They want to know what is the current through the resistor. They want to know what's the current. The equation that we'll use is I is equal to delta Q, the change in charge over the change in time. We know that 30 coulombs goes through this thing in a time of 6 seconds, and so now we're equal to 5 coulombs per second. But we won't use the coulomb per second instead because we know it's current, 
we're going to call that 5 amps, 5 amps. For number two, it says calculate the current that results from a charge flowing at a rate of 2.5 times 6, 10 to the 16th elementary charges per second. Remember we said an elementary charge is E. And we're going to start by uh, finding here, uh, we know I is equal to Q over T. And Q, remember, is coulombs. Here we have elementary charges, so we need to convert it. And we said in the electrostatics unit that 2.5 times 10 to the 6th E, or uh, that is uh, the elementary charge, times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th will give me coulombs. So there's 1 E for every 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, and that's kind of what we did for charge. Uh, that also happens in one second, so we can kind of put these two down on the bottom together. And if we go ahead and do our math, we end up with 4 times 10 to the negative third in coulombs per second again, which we, because the E's cross off, which is an amp. So 4.3 times 10 to the negative third coulombs per second, which we said is an amp. And for number three, this one says the current through a light bulb is 2 amps. How many coulombs of electric charge pass through the light bulb in one minute? We know that I is equal to delta Q all over T. And so our charge is equal to I times T. So I call this the quit equation. Q is equal to I T, which looks like quit. Um, we said that we have a 2 amp current. And we said that our time is one minute. But remember, everything needs to be in seconds. So this should be 60 seconds. If I multiply in 2 times 60, I end up with 120. And that's an amp times a second. But remember, charge is measured in coulombs. So an amp times a second is really just a coulomb. And that is question number three. Let's go ahead and take a look at number four. It says I have a one and a half volt battery. So voltage is a measure of potential. So here we have electric potential and a battery. So you have a one and a half volt AAA battery. It supplies 750 milliamps. Uh, if you look in your, uh, if you look at your AP equation sheet, you'll notice that uh, milliamp is 10 to the negative sixth. So that'd be a milliamp, so 750 times 10 negative 6. They flow through the light bulb for 5 minutes, while a 1.5 volt C cell supplies 750 milliamps, but for 20 minutes, so it will last 4 times longer. Compared to the total charge transferred by the AAA cell through the bulb, the total charge transferred by the C cell is, and then our answer here, we've got to think about what is delta Q. Delta Q is a change in charge, and that's equal to our current times our time. And because our time is much bigger for the C cell battery, we said it was a difference of four. So 20 minutes divided by five minutes gives me four times the time. If I have four times the time, and let's just say that I have one for I, then I know that the change in my charge should be four times greater too. And therefore our answer is letter D. Number five is our next question, and for number five, it says the current traveling uh, from the cathode to the screen in a television picture. So in the old tube TVs, those great big TVs we used to have, if you look at it from the side, there would be on the inside a big tube, and that big tube would have a screen on it, and they would come back to the back, and there'd be a little box here, and that box would shoot electrons towards the front of the screen. Uh, so the current that travels from the cathode to the screen, so from this little box in the back to the screen, has a current of equal to 5 times 10 to the negative fifth amperes, so amps. They want to know how many electrons strike the screen in a time equal to 5 seconds. So the first thing we're going to do with this one is we're going to say I is equal to Q over T. We're going to solve for Q. Remember, it's Q is equal to IT, so it's the quit equation. I know my I is 5 times 10 to the negative fifth, 
and our time here is 5 seconds. So we end up with a charge of 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth coulombs. How many electrons is that? Well, let's start with the 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth coulombs. And we're going to need to convert that to electrons. So one electron, we said, is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And if you do your math, you will end up with 1.6 times 10 to the 15th electrons. So that's a lot of electrons hitting the screen. The next topic that we're going to look at is called resistance. Uh, if you are running and somebody grabs a hold of you and pulls you back, they are resisting you. So when you're in a wire, when charges are moving easily through some materials like a conductor, in other materials they don't flow very well. So if you try to hook up a circuit with plastic, it doesn't work very well. And the ability for something to conduct electricity is called conductivity. Really good conductors have really high conductivities, and the conductivity depends on the density of the free charges available to move, so how many little charges you have and how how well they can move, and then how well they actually can move through this, this wire thing. Uh, the material's ability to resist the movement is called resistivity, and this little guy is symbolized with the Greek letter rho. It's measured in something we call an ohm meter, and it's represented by this funny Greek letter, an ohm, which is uh, omega, times a meter. And both this thing of conductivity and resistivity are properties of a material. So gold is a really awesome conductor. Uh, you will actually find a little bit of gold or a little bit of um, silver in your cell phone. And they do that on purpose because it conducts electricity so well. There's a table over on the side that shows the resistivities of different metals. And the resistance of a metal is equal to the equation that you see right here which is rho, remember we said that's the resistivity, so that's this funny looking P, times L, that's the length of the material, divided by the area of the material. So if I have a wire that looks like this, I know its length would be here, and I know its area comes from its radius. So if I know the radius, the area, remember, is equal to pi r squared. And so there's our length, there's our area, here's our row. Now we can find the resistance. So let's go ahead and try a question. Let's look at number six. For number six, it says a three and a half meter length of wire has a cross-sectional area, and they give it to us, and then they tell us that it has a resistance of this. They want us to find the resistivity of the wire and the material that it's made out of. So we know our equation is R is equal to rho times L all over A. Let's go ahead and plug everything in that we know. We know the resistance is 0.0625 ohms. We know that we're looking for the, the resistivity of the material. We know the length is 3.5 meters, and we're going to divide that by the area, and the area is very small, 3.14 times 10 to the negative sixth meters squared. So let's find out what this resistivity of this material is. If you go ahead and get out your calculator and you solve for the answer, you should end up with an answer of 5.6 times 10 to the negative eighth ohms times a meter. And if we look at our table, the one that's the closest to 5.6 times 10 to the negative eighth is it's actually the same value as tungsten. They're not always exactly the same. They're usually pretty close. So we know that this metal is tungsten. And that is number six. Let's go ahead and take a look at number seven. Number seven says the electrical resistance of a metallic conductor is inversely proportional to its. And what we'll do is let's use our formula again. So the resistance is equal to rho times L all over A. So it's directly proportional to its resistivity. Resistance is directly proportional to the length. And it looks like it's inversely proportional to the area. So our answer for number seven is actually C. For number eight, 
it says at 20 degrees, so they always use that just for a standard temperature. It says four wires made of different materials have the same length and the same diameter, which means they have the same length and they have the same area. Which wire has the least resistance? The least resistance is going to be the one that has a um, very small value for resistivity. And so if we go back up to our table again, we'll notice out of the choices that they've given us, they talked about aluminum, gold, nichrome, and tungsten. So we have aluminum, gold, nichrome, and tungsten. And so um, if we look, the resistivity that is the smallest out of all of these, and notice that this table is not in order. So the one with the smallest resistivity, okay, out of aluminum, gold, nichrome, and tungsten would have to be gold. This number is the smallest out of all these three. The next closest would be, looks like it's aluminum. So gold has the smallest resistivity, which means that that rho value would be very small. So let's do our equation again. R is equal to rho L over A. These are the same for each thing. And so we just want to find out which one has the smallest rho value, and that would be gold. Question number nine. Uh, this one says a length of copper that is one meter long and a silver wire have the same area and resistance. They want to know the length of the copper wire. So they want to know the length of that copper wire. To find it, we've got to set up an equation. We know that the resistance is equal to rho times L all over the area. And we're going to say that this is for copper. Okay, So we're going to put a little C here. And then we have another equation for silver. We said rho, uh, the resistance of the silver is equal to rho for silver times the length of the silver divided by the area. And we know here it says they have the same cross-sectional area and the same resistance. So we can actually set the two equations equal to each other. Uh, when we set them to equal to each other, we have the rho for copper, so the resistivity of copper times its length of copper divided by the area that we have for copper. And that's equal to the resistivity of silver times the length of the silver all over the area of that wire that is made out of silver. But what's interesting is they said that the area is the same for both, so we can actually get rid of those. And now we can solve for the length of the copper. We're just going to rearrange our equation. The length of copper will be equal to the rho value for silver times the length of the silver wire divided by the rho value for copper. So let's plug all our numbers in from the table. 1.59 times 10 to the negative eighth is the resistivity of silver times one meter, and that's how long the wire is that's silver. And the resistivity of copper is 1.72 times 10 to the negative eighth. If you do your math, you're going to find out that that length is 0.924 meters. So that would be the length of the copper wire that has the same resistance and the same cross-sectional area, but it's got to have a different length. And you'll notice it's a little bit shorter because it has a little bit higher resistivity. For number 10, we have a 10 meter long copper wire at 20 degrees Celsius. The radius of the wire is 1 times 10 to the negative third meter. They first want us to find the cross-sectional area of that wire. So we're going to do that first. We just need to find the area. And it's a circle. So the area of a circle is just equal to pi r squared. That's on your table of information. So you can always look up that, that equation. So this will be pi times the radius, which is 1 times 10 to the negative third. And we need to square it. And that gives us 3.14 times 10 to the negative sixth square meters. They now want us to calculate the resistance of the wire. So resistance is equal to rho times the length, all divided by the area. Our rho value for copper, so notice this is copper. If we look on our table, is 1.72 times 10 to the negative eighth. We're going to divide that by 3.14 times 10 to the negative sixth. And we end up with a resistance of 5.5 times 10 to the negative second ohms. And that is question number 10. 
Uh, and I think at that point, we are done. And we in the next video, we'll start with Ohm's Law.